Now, Post Toasties, the heat good cornflakes, is proud to present Gunsmoke. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, the story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Say there, next time you hear a crackling noise in your kitchen, better get up and investigate. Maybe somebody just couldn't wait for his breakfast of crackling crisp post toasties. And that's a treat you shouldn't miss. Post toasties, you know, are the heat good cornflakes. Why, after one taste, I'll bet anything you'll agree with me. Post toasties is just the best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. There's nothing quite like sweet kernel corn flavor when it's toasted right in. Toasted into crisp, fresh cornflakes. Man, oh man, that's post toasties. Heat good cornflakes. Better try them. And now, Gun Smoke, starring William Conrad. <laughs> figure it'll take us to drive this herd into Dodge after we cross the Cimarron, Larson. Well, it depends on how hard you want to push him, Bryant. I hired you because I ain't been up here before. How far is it to Dodge? Oh, 50 mile, maybe. Ah. Five easy days, then. I don't want to bring them steers in too poor. It's the men that's got poor this trip, not the steers. Ah, there's a lot of juice left in the men. Too much, maybe. Look at him. Oh, it's that old Indian that rode in a while ago. They're just having a little fun with him. They better take it easy. No telling how many warriors he's got waiting somewhere. Hey, Cotton. Tell that Indian to come over here. I want to talk to him. Yeah, he probably just wants a steer out of the herd. Well, I'm tired of giving good beef away. You, boss, my name is Tobiel. Tobiel, huh? What do you want, Tobiel? I guide cattle on trail to Dodge. We don't need any guide, Chief. I know the trail. I have letter from men in Dodge. Yeah. You read. Letter tell you how good guide Tobiel is. Let's see your letter. Yeah. Old time guide. Many years with Army. Big scout. Well, why ain't you still with the Army, then? Too old now. But can guide cattle on trail to Dodge? Very cheap. <laughs> why, you old liar. Tobiel never lie. No? Listen to this, Lyson. To whom it may concern. The name of this noble red man is... Tobiel. He's a liar, a beggar, and a thief. What he wouldn't steal, a hound pup couldn't pull out of a tan yard. Give him some cold grub or a three-cent drink, if you have any about you, and then run him out of camp. <laughs> Signed, R. Durbin, J.C. Weiser. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they sure wrote him a good letter. No, no, no. Letter can't say that. They, my friends, they write letter, help me get job. What'd you try to steal off of them? Tobiel never steal. No? 
Well, I'll take the word of a white man any day. Larson, you heard what the letter says. Have the boys run them off. Wait, let her lie. They fool me. Tobile, man with much honor among white men in army. This ain't the army. Run them off, I said. Come on, chief. I leave. I leave. Alone. You leave, all right. And get going. Yeah. But these men die for this. If anybody dies, it'll be you. Here he is, boys. Let's send them down the trail. Here comes Miss Kitty. Ah, so it is. Hello, Kitty. Hello, Master. Miss Kitty? You're going to work a little early, aren't you? No, I'm just getting a breath of air. <laughs> sure is going to be a nice evening, ain't it? For you, maybe. Oh, is there anything wrong, Kitty? Just that trail heard across the river. Dodge will soon be full of drunken cowboys, all looking for trouble. <laughs> we'll handle them, Miss Kitty, don't you worry. Er, <coughs> at least Mr. Dillon will. Shooting them's easy. I gotta talk to them. Oh, you can always quit, Kitty. Sure. You do what? Teach Sunday school? <laughs> Boy, you might. You talk like a Texan yourself, Miss. You know what one of them told me once? He said I reminded him of his mother. He really said it. Well, that sounds nice, Miss Kitty. I thought so, too, Chester. Till he got real drunk and told me his mother was the first woman to be hung south of San Antonio. She was. Who hung her? Probably he did. Oh, now, Miss Kitty, no man would hang his own mama. Why, it just ain't... Marshal? Yeah? We come to warn you. Oh, uh-huh. Warn me about what, mister? My name ain't mister, it's Weiser. My partner's name here is Derby. I can tell him my own name, Weiser. Shut up. No. Marshal, that Indian's going to get himself hurt. What are you talking about? That Indian, across the street there. See him? No. Uh-huh. Now, that's Tobiel. You know him? What's the trouble, Weiser? He keeps following us around. Says he's going to kill us. Tobiel? That doesn't sound like him. Well, it's true. Tis, you you asked him. He's been haunting us for four days. Just stands around staring at us and saying we're going to die. I'd have shot him long ago, but I hear that's against the law around here. Where are you men from? Wyoming Territory. Where'd you know Tobiel? We've been in Dodge a couple of weeks. Seen him around here. Now, what's the trouble between you? Well, we... <laughs> <laughs> we played a little joke on him, is all. Made him mad, I guess. We told him he could get a job guiding trail herds into Dodd, give him a letter. Yeah. He thought the letter said how good he was, but it really said he was a thief and run him out of camp. <laughs> <laughs> I see. And he tried to use your letter, said it? I guess so. Went away for a couple of days, and since he got back, he keeps saying he's going to kill us. It's getting on my nerves, Marshal. I'll shoot him, sure. You'll shoot anybody, and you'll hang for it, Wiser. Now, wait here. I'll go talk to him. I gotta go to work, Matt. Okay, Kitty. I'll see you later. And you two heroes. You're pretty funny. I hope he does kill you. Why, you... Hold it, Wiser. Watch him, Chester. Yes, sir. Hello, Tobiel. Hello, Marshal. Tobiel, those two men over there say that you threatened to kill them. Is that true? Did I? They told me the story, Tobiel. I'm sorry it happened. But uh, you can't kill men for that. Tobiel, old but still proud. You know what'll happen if you do kill them, don't you? You'll go to jail and probably hang for it. No. Tobiel, never in jail. Man with much honor. Look, uh, Tobiel, I got no use for Wiser and Durbin. 
neither one of them could be much good, but the law's the law, and... Tobil no kill. Tobil's medicine kill. Make very strong medicine against them. Well, you work all the medicine you want, but don't you do any killing yourself. And stay away from them, Tobil. You're making them jumpy. There might be trouble if you don't. Tobil not afraid. They carry guns, Tobil. All you've got's a knife. Remember that. Uh, I remember. All right. Tell him, Marshal? Yeah. You men didn't understand him. He's not threatening to kill you himself. He's making Indian medicine against you, that's all. Well, well, then why does he keep say, saying we're, we're going to die? And why is he always following us around? He thinks his medicine will kill you. I guess he wants to be there when it does. There's no harm in it. And I'm warning you again, both of you, you leave him alone. You do anything to that old man and I'll throw you in jail. Look, Marshal, that letter that started all this... That was Weister's idea, not mine. It sure was. Any idea we've ever had's been mine. Oh? I never did need you, Durbin. Oh, is that so? Who who did your dirty work up to Cheyenne? You did. Yeah. You fool. I sure did, and you still owe me for it. Ah, shut up. So you ain't gonna do nothing about that Indian marshal. I know Tobiel pretty well, and I'll personally guarantee his word. Nobody's gonna do anything about him, including you. Good day, gentlemen. Mr. Dillon? Oh, good morning, Chester. Uh, good morning. Uh, Mr. Dillon, they just carried that fellow Weiser up to docks. What? Well, what happened to him? I don't know. Well, let's go see. Did you see him, Chester? No, sir. I just saw a couple men coming downstairs, and they said I'd better go get you. That's all they said. Oh, hello, Matt. What happened to Weiser, Doc? Well, for one thing, he's been stabbed, Matt. Oh? Bad? Bad enough to kill him. The men who carried him up here said they found him lying in an alley. This morning. He's been dead, oh, three, four hours, I'd say. And there's something else, Matt. Take a look here. What? Somebody hit him on top of the head, Doc. No. No, they didn't hit him. He's been scalped, Chester. Indian style. <laughs> morning appetites at your house. Well, if they're pretty drowsy, here's a real good way to wake them up. Set a bowl full of Post Toasties, the heat good cornflakes at everybody's place. Just watch your folks take notice when they see how crisp Post Toasties are. And wait till they taste that sweet kernel corn flavor toasted in. Bet your whole tribe will agree with you. Post Toasties are the best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. And here's a thought if you'd like to make a good thing even better. Try topping Post Toasties with your favorite fruit. You'll find that's a mighty good way to start the day. Fact is, it's a downright delicious way. So next time you shop, be sure to ask for Post Toasties. They're the heat good cornflakes. You'll see. Post Toasties heat good cornflakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Heat good cornflakes. Post Toasties heat good cornflakes. Now back to Gunsmoke. It was pretty hard for me to accept the idea that Tobiel had murdered and scalped Weiser, but the evidence seemed plain enough. The old Kiowa had been a highly valued army scout for over 30 years. 
and then it moved into a little hut at the edge of Dodge when he grew too old for active service. He'd lived quietly and had never given anyone any trouble at all before. But Weiser and Durbin had injured his pride with their so-called joke. And Tobiel had evidently reacted in the only way he knew. Now I had to arrest him. Chester and I walked out to his hut. And just as we reached it, Durbin came running up. We told you, Marshal, didn't we? We told you that engine was going to kill somebody. Did you see it happen, Durbin? No, no, I, I went to bed. Why, sir, he, he was doing a little gambling. That dirty red skin, he got him on the way home. It hasn't been proved, he did it. Well, of course he did it. Who else would scalp a man? I don't know. Well, here, look at that here, Marshal. Look, he's right here. Look that. Hanging right onto his hut like, like he was bragging about it. Well, Mr. Dillon, that's a scalp. Yeah. He's drying it in the sun is what he's doing. The murdering devil. You two stay here. I'll see if he's inside. Yes, sir. Come outside, Tobiel. I got you now, Tobiel. Let's string him up, Marshal, right here. Shut up, Devin. Tobiel, did you kill Weiser last night? Weiser? Kill? Stabbed with a knife and scalped. He died. Durbin there, he died too. You see, Marshal, he even admits I told you to stay out of this, Durbin. Now tell me straight, Tobiel. Did you kill him? Tobiel, no kill. Two bills, medicine, kill. And what's Weiser's scalp doing there? Scalp? Right there. Yeah. Weiser's scalp, all right. Where's your knife, Tobiel? Here, my knife. Look out, Marshal. He'll use it. No, he won't. Give me your knife, Tobiel. Yeah. That looks clean to me. Wait a minute. Well, of course, he's had plenty of time to get it clean. You think I kill Weiser with knife? Did you? Medicine kill Weiser. Tobiel, no kill. Now, Tobiel, I'm going to have to arrest you. You'll have to go to jail. Jail? No. Tobiel, man with too much honor for jail. I'm sorry, Tobiel, but you'll get a trial. Well, let, let's hang him now, Marshal. Indians don't need no trial. I'm the law here, Durbin, and don't you start anything like that. Big disgrace. Tobiel in jail. Yeah, I know, but I... I can't help it. Chester. Get that scalp. We'll need it for evidence. Yes, sir. to go to supper, Matt? Yeah, I'll be right with you, Doc. Uh, Chester, you better stay here and watch Tobiel, huh? All right, Mr. Dillon. Uh, you can go eat when I get back. <laughs> I'll see you later. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, I hear Tobiel's pretty unhappy about being locked up, Matt. Yeah, I had a long talk with him, Doc. I'm afraid he's going to be locked up for a long time. Oh? Why is that, Matt? Well, no judge will hang him on circumstantial evidence. But he'll probably go to prison. He hasn't any kind of an alibi, Doc. None at all. And if I know Tobiel, he'd rather hang than be in prison. Yeah, I'm afraid you're right. What's that? It came from the jail. Come on. Mr. Dillon? What happened, Chester? Somebody shot Tobiel. Right through the bars. Is he dead? He sure looked it. Let me take a look at him. All right, Doc. Get out the front, Chester, and come up the alley. Yell if you see anybody. I'll cover the back. Yes, sir. Mr. Dillon? All right, 
I'm coming, Chester. What is it? I saw Durbin. Oh? He ran out of the next alley and went into the Alpha Ganja there. All right, let's go get him. It must have been him that done it. Sure looks like it. There he is. Over at the bar. Get out of the way, Chester. Yes, sir. Darvin! You're under arrest, Durbin. Unbuckle your gun belt and drop it on the floor. What for, Marshal? For shooting Tobiel. I seen Chester standing there when I come out the alley. Should have shot him, too. Never mind the talk. Drop your gun. No. Shooting Tobiel was a bad enough mistake, Durbin. You finding out I did it was. Uh, see... I figured Tobiel must have saw me get wise here, and at the trial he, he he'd, he'd have started talking. No. He was home, alone, making medicine against you. He had no alibi at all. Then I, I killed him for nothing? If you hadn't killed him, he'd have probably been convicted. And you'd have gone free. Uh, look, Marshal, you can't prove that I, I killed Weiser. No. <laughs> well, and I ain't gonna hang for shooting no engine, not me. Don't try it, Durbin. Why not? <laughs> you, you hit him both times, Mister Dillon. Yeah. Want me to take care of it? No. Somebody else can do it. Let you and me go give Tobiel a real fine burying, huh? I figure we kind of owe it to him. In just a moment, we'll tell you about next week's adventure on Gunsmoke. Say, Mother, want to see your small fry eat a better breakfast than ever? Well, may I suggest that you dish him up some sugar crinkles to start with? Sugar crinkles, you know, make breakfast more fun than a circus. Sugar crinkles is the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. It's high time to forget these sugar-coated cereals that seem too sweet to you and those others that don't seem sweet enough to the kids. Just pour out crisp golden sugar crinkles and see how just right sweet a sugar-coated cereal can be. Just right sweet. Be sure to get several packages of sugar crinkles because they're great for snacks. Kids love them that way. Kids love them anyway. Try sugar crinkles and you'll love them too. Remember, new sugar crinkles is the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. Smoke under the direction of Norman MacDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Ralph Moody, Byron Kane, Frank Gerstle, and Harry Bartell. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kit. Ken Peters speaking. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Listen next week at this time when Gunsmoke will be brought to you by Sugar Crinkles, the sugar ice treat that's just right sweet. Mm-hmm.